everyone. Welcome to another edition of Inside Investing, the show that helps you level up on your financial knowledge and sharpen your investing skills. I'm your host, Nugwa Haruna. If there's one thing income investors crave, it's predictability. They want to know how much investment income they may earn and when they can expect to receive it. And that's why fixed income products like bonds and GICs can often be their go-to products. They have set income payments and schedules that investors can plan around. But like any investment, there's a trade-off to consider. An investor must tie up their principal at the bond's specific interest rate and return. So investing in bonds can potentially backfire when interest rates are highly unpredictable. After all, nobody wants to lock into a bond yield that soon ends up being below the market rates. That's where bond laddering comes in. It can add a degree of flexibility and predictability to a fixed income portfolio. Now, if you're not familiar with bond ladders, don't sweat it. We're going to learn all about how they work and how to build them. Joining us is Jennifer Larmer, founder of Diamond Nest Egg. Jennifer, thanks for swinging by. It's nice to be here, Nova. Thank you for having us. I'm super excited for the conversation. Um, so you describe yourself as a super saver since you were a kid. So what sparked your love for saving and investing from such a young age? Well, I think it's a combination of my dad and my grandfather. My dad taught me how to save and my grandfather taught me the concept of compound interest. So the two of them really got me my start. Let's put it that way. Oh, that's awesome. And so you launched a YouTube channel that focuses on do-it-yourself investing and actually focuses particularly in bonds. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to do this. Right. So the, the reason we launched the YouTube channel is because in financial services, I'm sure you're well aware, there's a lot of lingo, lingo and a lot of big words. And it doesn't have to be that way. So our goal really was to make it as simple as possible so that ev everybody can basically invest. and. My interest in bonds actually started when I was, um, I started my career at the age of 17 at JP Morgan. And we started out in bonds, but since then, let's just say interest rates were not very high. So there hasn't been much interest, but recently with the rise in interest rates in the US and around the world, there has been a renewed interest in bonds. So we started looking at inflation protected bonds actually for our clients. Most of them were a bit older. Um, and that's how our bond journey started or restarted, I would say. All right, so uh, before we get into our conversation, just a quick note to our audience. We'll be covering how Jennifer builds a bond ladder based on her specific investing goals and needs. The factors she considers may be different from yours. So take our conversation as food for thought to consider in your approach rather than financial advice. Okay, so with that said, let's get into our conversation. So some investors may not be familiar with fixed income as an asset class. So can you explain how a bond works and what some of the key terminology to understand would be? Right. So the easiest way to think about a bond is that you are lending the government or a company money. So the government or the company would be the bond issuer. And essentially, you would be the investor. So the principal is the amount of money that you would lend to them. And maturity is essentially how long that bond lasts for. Um, and if you hold that bond to maturity, you would be guaranteed uh, your interest payment and your return of principal. Having said that, bonds also trade on the secondary market. And when you decide that you want to sell it in the secondary market, you would get not the principal and maturity, but you would get back whatever price the market is willing to pay. Speaking of that, uh, what are some of the factors that might influence an existing bond's value that investors want to keep in mind? Right. So the most important thing is the interest rate. And that's why we're, I think we're having this conversation today, right? Because historically, interest rates, and I'll use the U.S. as a reference point because that's where uh, we mostly work, um, interest rates have been pretty low. Um, on treasuries, historically, people were getting 1%, 2%, depending on the, um, the maturity of the bond. So whether it's a three-month bond, a six-month, or a 10-year bond, you couldn't get more than 15 to 2%, depending on the maturity. Now, with inflation rising as it is, and uh, the central banks having to increase interest rates because to bring down that inflation, um, interest rates on bonds have gone up significantly. And that was how we got interested in it because 
the interest rates that you would get on a new bond was so much higher than you could have gotten on the historical bond. So definitely the prevailing interest rates um, and historically um, inflation as well, right? Because when you buy bonds and you hold to maturity, you get a fixed rate of return. Um, and if that, if inflation is higher than your fixed rate of return, you're essentially losing money. The credit quality of the issuer, so whether that's a government or whether that's a company, so how it works generally is their bonds are rated from triple A to D. I personally just don't touch anything below triple B because that's considered not investment grade. One of the reasons most folks buy bonds is because there is a level of safety involved with a bond. Somebody asked me about an 11% government bond from another country. And I said to him, um, there's a reason they pay 11%. And that was the country risk that was there because the likelihood of that country defaulting is very high, essentially. So that's credit quality. The third thing is your reinvestment risk, right? Because if you buy um, a three-month bond and at the end of three months it matures, you think to yourself, okay, where will interest rates be then? Will I get the same interest rate that I'm getting right now? Or will I be getting a different interest rate? Where am I going to put that money? So reinvestment risk is a big risk. All right. So um, so I, I do want to mention that when we talk about U.S. Treasuries, the terminology used uh, in the United States, in Canada, we would say, for instance, our short term, uh, any short term loans to the government of Canada would be T-bills. And then we would call the rest of them government bonds. So anything that's over a year. So uh, just to make sure that we are, you know, we're keeping on track with uh, with some of the different terms that we may uh, we may have. All right, so we're we're talking about uh, uh, factors impacting bond pricing, but bond pricing and the yields are not as straightforward as stocks, as you were mentioning. So, what are some nuances that an investor should understand about bonds? Right. So the key thing that, as a bond investor, that you have to remember is that bond prices and interest rates have an inverse relationship. So let's go back and say in 2010, I bought a bond at 2%. Now, bonds are going at 5 to 6%, right? Uh, so for the investor who bought the bond at 2%, to get that equivalent 5 to 6% yield, that, that bond price now has to go down from what you originally bought it at. So as interest rates go up, the value of your existing bonds, if you were to sell them in the secondary market, would go down so that you would the the exist, existing bondholders would get the same level of return now the thing to remember and i always tell folks this is when you look at your portfolio of old bonds that you bought in say 2010 and you see that market value going down it might cause you alarm but if you hold that bond to maturity you will still get your return of principal so that's the key thing to remember now, you may not want to hold that, you know, 2% bond and you, want to, you may want to sell, but know that when you sell, you will get a significantly lower price. Okay, so essentially what a bond investor then should consider about bond pricing is there is a possibility that the price will fluctuate in between the issue and the maturity date. If you want to still get your principal back, then if you hold it till maturity, you'll get your principal. But if you decide to sell it in the interim, there's a chance you might sell it at lower or maybe higher than the price that you originally paid for it. Right. So if so, if interest rates went down to one percent, then you would probably be able to to make a profit because then it would go up. But if it, you know, if it goes up to six percent, then you would have to sell it for a loss. All right, so thanks for filling us in on Bond Basics, Jennifer. So um, it's a lot to take in at once. Uh, so for those of us in our audience who want to brush up on details, you can check out our video course, Intro to Bonds. It's available in the Learning Center on WebBroker and on TD's YouTube page. All right, so let's continue and not, let's now move on to bond laddering. So we'll get into the nuts and bolts of uh, bond laddering. So what exactly is a bond ladder? And what might a relatively simple one look like? Right. So a bond ladder, in the most simplest terms, is essentially a portfolio of bonds with different maturities. Um, and a very simple one could be, if you're just starting out, you could build um, a bond ladder with a three-month bond, a six-month bond, a nine-month bond, and then a one-year bond. And when that three-month bond matures, you would then reinvest it 
into a, another one-year bond. And when the six-month bond matures, you would invest it in another one-year bond. And when the nine-month bond uh, matures, you would invest it in another one-year bond. And at the end of a year, you would then have every three months, essentially, um, a one-year bond maturing. And in a rising interest rate environment, that would be great because then you can reinvest at each, I call them a tranche, so each bond is a tranche. So at each tranche, you reinvest at a higher rate. All right, so why might an investor want to build a bond ladder? When you move into retirement or for whatever reason you feel like you need a more secure stream of income, people ladder so that they know when they're going to get that stream of income, whether it's an interest payment or it's a principal payment. Um, the primary one is that you really expect interest rates to rise. So that's how we got started. So we know that our, our central bank has meetings every, say, two to three months, roughly. Well, I had the suspicion that they would raise interest rates every few months to control inflation. So we bought, uh, we started laddering because of the fact that every few months when they had the next meeting and they announced the next rate hike, we would be getting bonds at a higher rate. Um, that was why we did it. Um, you feel that Again, going back to the rising interest rate environment, you feel that there's a chance to capture these higher rates and then kind of leave it there, kind of like a savings account almost or emergency fund that when you see other opportunities, you can then pull the money out and reinvest it. So as a place basically to park money that you would be investing. I mean, right now we're going through rising interest rates, but yeah. there, for a long time we weren't. So does that mean investors would typically not use bond ladders during that time frame? No, then that would be group two. That would be the group of folks that want to basically space out their uh, interest and principal repayments. For example, if you know that your child or your grandchild, for example, will be going to college. Some people start building ladders when their children are very young and they, have, they, they will buy a 20-year or a 10-year bond, say, when the child is eight. And in the U.S., they go to college at 18. So then they'll buy a big chunk of um, bonds that will mature when the child turns 18, another chunk when the child um, turns 19, and, that, and then 20 and 21. And then every year when it matures, then they can then use that money for their child's um, tuition. All right. So uh, that predictability then of the bonds coming back into play. Exactly. Uh, all right. So what are some of the potential risks with bond laddering? If you want to do individual investing and into individual bonds, it is a bit more complicated. So you need to have the time to do that. Um, you need to have the capital to do that because laddering, uh, it costs money. There's a minimum amount that you need to invest when you buy individual bonds, whereas that amount is significantly lower when you're investing in a bond fund. All right. So uh, thanks for filling us in on the basics of bond laddering. Um, so I want to take a moment to dive into WebBroker to show our viewers how they can research bonds to consider for a bond ladder. Once in WebBroker, click Research. Under Investments, click Fixed Income. This brings you to the Fixed Income homepage where investors may be able to find money market securities such as bankers acceptance, commercial paper, government T-bills, as well as bonds, such as the Government of Canada bonds, municipal bonds, provincial bonds, strip bonds, as well as corporate bonds. We'll start off by exploring Government of Canada bonds zero to five years. Once here, an investor is able to see the name of the issuer, the currency the bond is traded for, as well as the annual coupon of this bond, and this is paid based on the face value of the bond. An investor can also see the maturity dates of this bond. An investor is able to see what the current market price is. The face value of bonds is 100. This bond is currently selling for $97.59, meaning this bond is selling at a discount. This bond is paying an annual coupon of 0.75% based on the face value, which is 100. So if an investor purchases this bond at the current ask price, they will actually be getting an effective yield of 4.40856% if they hold the bond to maturity. To see additional information, such as the credit rating of this bond, you'll look under the ratings column. This bond is a triple A rated bond, which means it, this is the highest credit rating quality. 
To see some other kinds of bonds, we're going to go back to the home page. And this time we're going to explore corporate bonds and we'll look up five to 10 year bonds. So these are bonds that still have between five to 10 years left before they mature. Once again, you're able to see the full name of the issuer. You'll see the currency and you'll notice now you have the option to purchase bonds that are in US dollars. We have our coupon rate. For this specific bond, it's paying 5.563% on the face value, which is 100, and this bond matures in 2028. Now looking at the ask price, this specific bond is selling over 100, and that means this bond is selling at a premium. The ask yield for this bond, if an investor pays 104.698 for this bond, and receives 5.563% on 100 for this bond, and holds the bond till maturity would be 4.50101%. To see some additional information on here, you will scroll to the right, and an investor will be able to see things like the credit rating or the credit quality of this bond. Now, if an investor decides to add different bonds to a portfolio, they're able to do so. All you need to do is select that bond and go under select portfolio name. Click on the drop down. If you already have a portfolio created, you can select that. But in this case, we want to create a new portfolio and we will choose a name and add it. Once we've done that, we're going to add this bond to our portfolio. If you want to review the different portfolios you have within the fixed income tab in Web Broker, you're able to do that by clicking on my portfolios. And then you can modify or delete your different types of portfolios. All right, so um, let's build an example bond ladder together from start to finish. So first off, okay. what are some of the key questions you need to ask yourself when deciding how to build a bond ladder? How much money do you have to invest, right? Uh, that is that is very important um, because it limits the basically how detailed your bond ladder can be, uh, the different types of bonds you can buy. So I think if you want to build a proper bond ladder, you really need to start with ten to fifteen thousand um, dollars to get to the stage that you want, just based on the minimum investment in, investment requirement per bond. So if a bond, if you have to buy five thousand dollars as a minimum purchase, then that means that you can buy three different types of bonds in your ladder that would mature at different dates. The second is uh, how much time do you have to put into, into this? Because it does take some time to learn the process. Uh, so if you wanted to, I generally spend nowadays probably half an hour every two weeks. I mean, when I first started, it did take a solid hour or two to figure everything out. We just asked our community the same question. They, they create their own spreadsheet, they plug it in, um, they have little calendar reminders that tell them when their um, bonds will mature and everything just m flows smoothly after, I would say, a couple of weeks. So I would say it doesn't take so much time, but you need to figure out what works for you. If you don't have so much time, you can also um, buy bonds that don't mature so frequently. So instead of a bond that matures every uh, four, four weeks, you buy one that matures every three months or every six months. But of course, that means that you can't control the rise in interest rates as much and you can't control that um, income and interest um, that you get back as much because of the fact that it matures much later. Uh, the third thing that I would say is what type of bonds do you want, right? Government bonds, uh, because of the fact that they are for all intents and purposes risk-free. Uh, especially when you talk about governments like the U.S. and Canada, when you're comfortable with government bonds, then I would say move on from government bonds to other things because then you have to take into those other considerations we talked about earlier, like credit quality um, and just whatever. If you're investing in a com company, you know, will that company go bankrupt for lack of a better term, right? Those are things you don't have to worry about when you start off with government bonds. What is your time horizon? So we have short-term ladders and long-term ladders. Our inflation protected ones are much more long-term. 
um, the ones in my retirement account are much more long term. But the ones where I'm managing my property taxes outside of the retirement, they're very short term. So what is your time horizon? When do you need that money? I am a huge believer in holding to maturity. The only I don't think I've ever sold a bond before maturity uh, in the past few years. Uh, so since we've started laddering and that's a very important thing to think about now, especially like I said, we don't know when interest rates will go up or down. And it's, it's very important to say, do I have, do I have it in me to hold this to maturity? And so, something I advocate is not looking at your balances every single day. <laughs> Yes, because sometimes that will make such a big difference, right? Yes. When you're not staring at your, yeah, you're not tempted to make those emotional decisions to say, I'm going to sell and I'm going to buy now. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the advantages of actually buying your own bonds and laddering because you have that, you have that ability to hold to maturity because if those bond funds last year were able to hold to maturity, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have suffered those massive losses. So that's, as a bond laddering investor, that's, that's one of the advan main advantages that you have. Okay. So can you talk us through how we might build a bond ladder with the expectation of rising interest rates? If you expect a rising interest rate environment, what, what you would tend to do is build a ladder with shorter maturity. So let's say, for example, you could build a ladder with three rungs, um, a four week treasury bill, a uh, eight week treasury bill and a 13 week treasury bill. And when the four week treasury bill matures, um, you would then buy your next 13 week treasury bill um, with the, those proceeds. And when the eight week treasury bill matures, you would buy another 13 week uh, treasury bill. And at that point, you will have three rungs of 13 week treasury bills, um, each maturing every four weeks. And if interest rates continue to rise, then you would just roll over that 13 week into another 13 week and keep going that way. Or if you have even more money, then you would just add another rung to it. All right. So let's say we expect the benchmark rates to fall instead. Um, how could we consider structuring a bond ladder with that in mind? Right. So there's two ways you can do this. And that depends on your personal situation to say that you don't know when you're going to need the money that you're putting into that bond investment. The easiest way to do it then is to buy the longest maturity that you can stomach essentially whether that's a 10 or a 20 year and you would get that peak interest rate and maybe you only need it in 10 or 20 years and you would get that peak interest rate for that time if you need the money before that and interest rates have gone down then you could just sell your bond in the market because you would still make money because interest rates have gone down that means your bond prices have gone up so this is for the folks that don't know when they need that cash. But say you do know when you need that money. So you know that instead of needing it in 10 or 20 years, you need it at year two, four, six, eight, and 10. Then you would just buy those maturities at that peak rate. And when, that mature, when the two-year matures, you would take the principal and the interest that you bought at the peak rate with, and you would use that money for whatever purposes. So that really depends on whether you have, um, I would say, uh, insight as to when you need that money. All right. So thanks for taking us through your thinking on building a bond ladder, Jennifer. Uh, so now I wanted to hop back into WebBroker to show our viewers how they can build a bond ladder of their own with either rising or falling interest rate expectations in mind. In WebBroker, you're able to create a hypothetical portfolio and track its performance. First, we'll create a four-rung fixed income ladder with the expectation of rising rates. This ladder will consist of four-week, eight-week, 12-week, and 20-week money market securities. Starting off, we'll go under government T-bills, go under zero to 60 days, select a four-week money market security. To create a new portfolio, simply click on Add to Portfolio. Now we rename this portfolio click save let's go back and add a few more money market securities this time under a banker's acceptance we're going to go 60 to 90 days select an eight week and a 12 week money market security clicking on the drop down and selecting money market we're going to add these to that portfolio Finally, to add our 20-week money market security, we go back home. Under government T-bills, we'll go 90 plus days. 
will select the money market security maturing in October, click on the drop down, select the portfolio we're interested in, add to portfolio. Once done, let's add our quantities. Once done, hit calculate and create a ladder report. The ladder report shows you the performance of your hypothetical bond ladder. Here you're able to see what the current market value is, as well as the yield to maturity. If you hold all securities in this portfolio to maturity. Now let's check out how an investor can create a five wrong bond ladder with falling interest rate expectations. For diversification purposes, I've already created one made up of corporate, municipal, provincial, and government bonds. To find any of your hypothetical portfolios, simply click on My Portfolios. In this case, we're focusing on our five-year ladder. Once you pull that up, simply click create ladder report. We're able to see what the market value is of our hypothetical portfolio, as well as what the yield to maturity would be if we held all bonds in this portfolio until maturity. Additionally, an investor is able to see what the total annual income would be for all the bonds based on the coupon payments that each of these bonds makes. Finally, on the second page, an investor is able to see what the breakdown in asset type allocation looks like in terms of corporate, municipal, provincial, and government bonds. Investors can also see when to expect their coupon payments. They're able to see the range of time in terms of maturity. And finally, investors can also see what the credit rating breakdown is for all the bonds in this portfolio. Now, some investors may feel it's, it's a challenging time to lock into fixed rate bonds with all the interest rate changes that we're having right now and the high inflation that we're seeing in 2023. So how are you approaching this situation as an investor? Right. So one of the things that we did, as I mentioned, is we tried to ladder with shorter maturities. So our initial ladder actually was a four, eight and 13 week ladder. And so every time when the four week um, matured, we rolled it into a 13 week. And the reason you would want to, we did that was because in theory, you could have just kept buying four week um, chunks of bonds, but the 13 week tended to pay a little bit more because it's, it's a longer, uh, longer maturity date. So the longer dated a bond generally is in normal times, um, the higher the interest rate. Uh, we're in a slightly different environment now, so we didn't want to go out for one year because of all these interest rate changes. So what we did was we, we laddered very short term maturities. And the second thing was that we bought inflation protected bonds. And I believe you guys have that in Canada as well, correct? Right. So we have a portfolio now of bonds that take advantage of the rising interest rates in non-inflation protected bonds by doing these short term maturity ladders. And we have a portfolio of inflation protected bonds. And I think that, so without giving too much away, I would say I have about 20, 30 years to retirement, but I'm assuming I'm going to work till the very end. So um, we started buying inflation protection bonds last year here, and they were paying 9.62% on an annualized basis at one point. And the thinking at that point was given where we were in life that we would then just sell those inflation protected bonds once the inflationary period was over and then put that money back into equities or, you know, longer dated treasuries, um, treasury bonds. Um, and as the situation evolved, what we saw is that you never know, you know, when inflation will hit. So for us, what we've actually done is converted some of our savings into this inflation protected bond for portfolio. Um, and we're going to keep it. So instead of selling it like we thought we would when inflation goes down, which it has, we're just going to keep it uh, because who knows, right? In 20, 30 years or even 10 years, this might come back. And as we get older and closer to retirement, the inflation protected portion will keep going up. And the great thing about the inflation protected bonds in, in the U.S., and I'm sure there's something similar in Canada, 
how they operate is that you can sell them after you hold it for a year. So for us, it's almost like it's almost like a bank account. You sit there, you forget about it, and it is inflation protected, so you don't ever have to worry about it. So it serves for us as a dual purpose, a dual purpose inflationary fixed income protection, but also as an inflation protected emergency fund. All right. And uh, in Canada, they are, interestingly enough, they're called real rate of return bonds. Yes. And uh, so they change depending on what the CPI is. And then that means that your rate is fixed, but your payments then go up or down uh, depending on whatever that principal amount is on your real rate of return uh, bond. OK, so now, Jennifer, an investor might change the maturities in a bond ladder as market dynamics or their income needs change. This would result in a gap where an existing bond hasn't yet matured to free up cash to buy the next rung in the ladder. So how do you manage uh, these situations? Right. So there are three ways you can do it. The easiest way is to just leave the gap, right? The, I mean, you, you just leave the gap and you wait until it's time to buy it again. It's, it's just a bit more effort the other two ways. The, the second way to do it is to see what other cash you have. Um, do you want to sell some stock investments um, and put that in there? Do you have money in a high yield savings account, whatever it might be, and buy that gap? And the third thing that you can do is to basically reinvest um, a little bit less at each rung when you're reinvesting. And then when you get to that gap where you're supposed to be filling it in, then fill it in with that money that you've pulled out from the other rungs, right? So for example, if you have a $60,000 um, bond ladder and you have three rungs, it's four weeks, eight weeks, and 13 weeks. So 20,000 in each, in each rung, then all of a sudden you want to move your ladder from a 13 week ladder to a 17 week ladder. What you would then do is when your four week um, table matures, instead of reinvesting 20,000, you reinvest 15000 into the new 17 week. And then you put that 5000 into a checking account or money market fund. Then when your eight week matures, you would again pull out another 5000 and invest um, into a 17 week. And then when the 13 week matures, then you would take out another 5000 and put the, uh, the 15000 in a 17 week. And then at the, the next, next time around, then you would have $15,000 set aside from those other rungs. And then you would essentially, have, instead of a three rung, 13 week bond ladder with $20,000 in it, you would have a four rung 17 week ladder with $15,000 in it. All right. I, I love those examples because it actually breaks it down. So yeah. <laughs> so thanks for sharing that. All right. So, and just one more quick reminder to our audience, we offer many interactive masterclasses that cover the basics of bond investing. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to join us. You can find a full schedule in the Learning Center on WebBroker. So, all right, Jennifer, we're going to have to leave it there. I want to thank you so much for sharing your uh, approach to building bond ladders in these uncertain market conditions. I have to say, I, I loved our conversation. It was very practical. So is there any final thoughts you'd like to share with our viewers today? I would say get educated. That's the biggest thing. And you guys have a great resource, but get educated on bonds. There's a lot of great um, resources out there and uh, they seem scary at first, but they're really not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So thanks again for joining us. And to those in our audience, uh, make sure to register for our upcoming live webinars and check out our library of on-demand content available in the Learning Center and on our YouTube page. See you all next time.